Hello, and welcome to the second edition of After Scientology Straight Up and Vertical, the show where me and uh, journalist Tony Ortega go over the stories that Tony has published in the last week on his uh, Substack blog, which you can see linked on the screen here, and uh, give some analysis and some feedback and some uh, some kind of like commentary on those stories from a cultic coercive control perspective. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Hey, Tony. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Chris. That's <laughs> be fun. Uh, you published a couple stories this week that I definitely thought were noteworthy. And uh, one of those was just the, just uh, today. Mark Bunker uh, had quite an interesting thing to say as a city council member for the Clearwater City Council in response to the Stand League, Scientology's. What, what's your take on the Stand League, first off? And what, you want to explain it to people, what the hell this sure. thing is? Yeah, you know, Scientology has always attacked people online and, and, and that kind of thing. But a few years ago, they made some noise about how they were creating this grassroots organization of Scientologists that were going to get their side of the story out. And, you know, those of us who could with our eyes open, could see that it was clearly just a propaganda effort by the church itself. And I have to say, Chris, I've done my best to ignore it mm -hmm. over the last few years. I just think that it doesn't reach very many people. It's trying to get a rise out of us. It's a, it's a tax Leah Remini all the time and Mike Rinder and myself. And I just, I just think the best policy is just to not say anything about it. But I have to say, this was pretty fun. I heard from Mark Bunker late last night. We're recording this on a Friday afternoon. And he wanted me to know that, first of all, Tampa Bay Times is coming out with some big story. I can't wait to see it. It may yeah. be out by the time you put this up. Yep. But uh, as a result of Tracy McManus do, just doing her job, Scientology is freaking out. And uh, Ben Shaw there in Clearwater sent uh, the city a couple letters. And Mark shared one of them with me. And, the, and it's a public document because Ben Shaw, for whatever reason, copied it to the mayor. And that makes it a uh, public document. So I post I posted it at my Substack. I wanted people to see how unhinged it was. Yeah. And apparently, um, Tracy had informed a city person who was raising questions about uh, Stan's um, Twitter account to hate monitor <laughs> that this this is a Scientology front. And Ben Shaw apparently took uh, extreme, uh, you know, uh, unction to this, and he sent this letter, you know, blaming her for propaganda which is just, you know, the height of hypocrisy because we have caught, Chris, we have caught in the past stand using fake accounts and bots. And I mean, it's just very, and just, and that's why I posted a couple of examples of their tweets to show you, this is not a grassroots effort by Scientologists. This is a, uh, you know, 24 hour a day operation by the church of Scientology to smear Leah Remini all day long it's a professional job and all the tracy mcmanus was doing was making sure the city knew that exactly. and that's her great crime and so ben shaw was attacking her over that yeah which was ridiculous and you couldn't be more spot on with the you know hypocrisy with a capital h on this one it's really quite something watching these guys at work and it's worth noting something i wanted to comment on about this to the audience at large, right? Which is something I've noticing, not just in the world of Scientology, clearly it's there, but this happens with other cult leaders and other cult groups and activities. Uh, recently, I've been noticing more of this. Maybe it's always been a thing. It's certainly been a thing for a lot of years, but this is really ramping up, especially with Scientology now, where they are using the language that we in the anti-cult world use of coercive control and the psychological principles involved in that and thought reform and Lifton's work and all of that. They take it, they appropriate it, and then they say, that's what we're doing. That's what they're doing, right? Leah Remini, propagandist, right? And this kind of nonsense. And it was quite telling to read this, this screed, this like unhinged nonsense, this letter that, he, that this guy Ben Shaw wrote, where he goes into detail about we're, you know, 67,000 followers, he says, and there's no bots. Those are all real Scientologists, goddammit. And you're <laughs> like, dude, 
Methinks you protest a little bit too much on that one, right? Because of because of course Jeffrey Augustine, you we've you know you looked up the stock photos of the Scientologist accounts and seen that they're just bot accounts and it's all just nonsense. And they will. It's so telling how they go so far out of their way to accuse us of what they're doing. Well, you know, I, you've been there too. I mean, one of the one of the situations we find ourselves in, they've attacked you online. They attack me regularly. They're always yeah. going after Leah and Mike. Yeah. And there is always a question, what do you do about it? Because uh, like I said, my policy is to ignore it as much as possible. But, you know, sometimes they'll say something about us and it's like, I need to address that. And I know you you have made that decision. And I thought you did a great job specifically addressing some of the ways that they were smearing you. Mm, thank you. Um, and, and I, it's, it's a tough position to be in It is, and they know that and they know it and they know it. But uh, in this case, I felt like, yeah, this, the, the public really needs to hear about how uh, Scientology in the, in the form of Ben Shaw is defending this horrific online smear machine that they have Ugh. and not and not only defending the, the the disgusting things that that account tweets 24 hours a day but then to make it sound like it was that tracy mcmanus somehow did something wrong by simply pointing out what it is exactly it, um okay well enough about that it's you know they're just gonna do what they're gonna do and and you are absolutely right and you actually convinced me that ignoring these people is really the best policy. And I've even put that out there on, on social media and stuff. It's like, look, guys, don't engage. Don't go there. It's just it, all it does is feed their machine, you know, and it's really not worth anybody's time or effort to do that. The one thing that will actually, if you want to drive them nuts, the one thing that will drive them crazier than anything is ignoring them. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, okay. Now, in addition to this, the much, the to me, the longer term and bigger picture story here is w some of what we talked about last week is the Valerie Haney arbitration moving forward. And, um, and, and then this lawsuit in Florida, which is being fought where Miscavige this week, what his lawyer was asserting that he does not do business in Florida, both of which were like, what the hell are you talking about? Right. How do you even get away with that? What what was the story on that? Well, let's do that one first. Uh, yeah. In the Baxter uh, trafficking lawsuit in uh, Tampa, Florida, three former Sea Org workers are suing over what they uh, characterize as horrific treatment as children and adults, specifically serving as basically indentured servants on Scientology's cruise ship, the Free Winds, for many years. Scientology's trying to get that basically derailed by forcing it into arbitration. And David Miscavige is is trying. He he was named a defendant. It was declared by a magistrate judge that he was evading service. Uh, Miscavige has objected to that and is asking the district judge to deny that ruling. It's kind of a mini appeal. And once again, his reasoning is that he does no personal business in Florida, which is just insane. I mean, when you think about the flag land base and. The flag building and remember David Miscavige opening that building and he's got offices there and at the West Coast building. I mean, come on. And and now, I mean, it might be one thing to say that if he was working primarily out of Los Angeles, but we know that he's primarily working out of Florida. So it's just an insane um, thing. So this what happened this week was that the plaintiffs came back with some specific examples that I thought were really good where they pointed out that just a couple of weeks ago, a Tracy McManus story had said that uh, David Miscavige has been personally calling Clearwater officials to lobby them about real estate development. Now, if that's not the def definition of doing business in Florida, I don't know what is. Exactly. Also, also that we saw social media where Scientology was advertising to its members that Dave presided over the New Year's New Year's event at the Fort Harrison Hotel in Clearwater, Florida. So, I, I mean, these I mean, are just great, great examples, right, Chris? I mean, I, just, I, I guess that's doing business, <laughs> right? I mean, it's 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 mind boggling the way they will try to twist the narrative around to fit whatever the circumstance is and make it make some kind of crazy sense. 
when their own, I mean, every Thursday, every Thursday, Mike Rinder posts th Thursday funnies, right? Where he gets Scientology promo and puts it up on his blog. And every week we see advertisements of Scientology organizations expected to show all the events that David Miscavige has presided over. And guess where he presided over them? In Clearwater at Flag every single time. The guy has not done events anywhere else for years except at Flag. He was he was primarily based out of uh, Gold Base in California for many years. That's right. But after some trouble went down there, um, uh, specifically Lawrence Wright's story in The New Yorker revealed that the FBI came this close to raiding that base in October 2010. Yep. And after that, Dave kind of broke up some of what's going on there, moved the uh, AV stuff to the SMP in Hollywood, and he got his ass out of there. That's right. Uh, and uh, I think it was Valerie who said that she, he um, he hasn't he they hadn't seen him there since 2013. Yeah. So, so where did he go? Well, you know, during the pandemic, he shows up doing these Friday graduations at Flag. So he, you know, it's just very clear. He might, of course, he may travel around, but his number one base now is the Flagland base. Exactly. Uh, and has been for several years. So, um, yeah. I, I, But again, I don't know how this judge is going to rule on that, Chris. And we're waiting for, so we're waiting for Judge Thomas Barber, the district judge in Tampa, Florida, to rule on Miscavige's objection to being named a defendant. And if I had to, you know, if I was a betting man, if I had to bet on this, I would gamble that Barber is going to deny that objection. Just today, I found that Miscavige's attorney asked to respond to Valeska's team pointing out those pieces of evidence about him working in Florida. And the judge said no. I mean, he's, you know, he's already got arguments from both sides. He doesn't Good. need more paper. Good. So Excellent. I would I would gamble that that Barber may deny that and and David Miscavige will stay a defendant. But the larger question in that lawsuit is what is Judge Barber going to do about this arbitration issue? We That's talked right. about that last week. I don't want to go into that too much right now. Yep. Except to just say it's still very much up in the air. And the biggest problem for Valeska and the Baxters in that regard is listen they've alleged horrific abuse i believe they have evidence they've got a very detailed complaint all that's very good but there's this heavy precedent in that courtroom from the garcia case from a few that's years right. ago that was upheld by the 11th circuit so that's that's a tough one i'm not sure how barber's going to come if, if barber's either just going to say look there's precedent that that we grant these motions to arbitration or if he's going to deny that yeah i think it's going to have to be on the nature of the crime that there's like a real abuse alleged here and that there's duress in the contracts um so we'll see i it's that's uh that's interesting so and who knows how long it's going to take him but that's what we're yeah. waiting for in tampa and that is and, and it is a it is an important point i think and i really hope it does swing the 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 judge on this one is that they were children when this was going on this was not, you know, grown adults signing contracts because, you know, you can be held responsible for signing away your rights on stuff as an adult that we just shouldn't be thinking about kids anywhere near the same way that we're thinking I, about adults. I know? agree with you, but I think I pointed this out last week too, Chris, is that they they talk about being abused as children in the complaint. Yeah. But the legal argument that's being going that's going on between both sides is really only about the contracts they signed as adults. Understood. Understood. So, yeah. As much as you think the the stuff that happened to them as kids should be taken into account, uh, it's possible that this ruling will be made without paying attention to that at all. Right. Right. Which to me speaks to the larger legal problem of a lack of recognition with a legal definition of coercive control itself and how it works as a repeating pattern. It is not a one-off. You do not determine somebody is being coercively controlled by watching one thing happen to them. It's a series of abuses that usually goes on for years. And when it starts at childhood, you have to take that into account when you're looking at adult behavior and how that was controlled. But we have no real concept of that in the American legal system, and that's gotta, we, we've got to deal with that. I see, yeah. Good point. Yeah. So um, now on the Haney arbitration, 
Okay, uh, so the Haney arbitration had a hearing, the Haney lawsuit had a hearing in court this week, and it's the last hearing she's going to have in court for a while now because at that hearing, and I got to listen into it live, um, Scientology informed the court that all three arbitrators are now in place. They are not naming them. We know the 15 people that Valerie nominated for her arbitrator, Scientology is saying one of them said yes, but they're not telling us which one. Is it Bonnie Rabisi, Jenna Elfman, John Cole, Rebecca Minkoff, Grant Cardone, Bob Duggan, uh, Matt Feshback? I mean, there's some really interesting names on that list. There are. Scientology is not saying which one said yes. Scientology also selected some per- a person, and they're not saying who that is. And then the two arbitrators have selected a third, and we don't know who that is. Right. But um, this week, they definitely said that that's all in place now, so it's it's out of the court's hands. Now, Valerie is facing the prospect of, of an arbitration. And during the hearing, her attorney, Graham Barry, said to the judge, okay, judge, but this woman escaped from Scientology in the trunk of a car. And uh, what we would like you to order is that when she has to go back to this organization – that she have somebody with her, a right. friend, an yes. attorney, a court reporter. And I got to tell you, the most, I wish uh, it, photos were allowed, but they're not. You should have seen the look on William Foreman's face, the attorney for Scientology. <laughs> he looked so upset. And he put on this big show to the judge. Judge, this has been litigated for years. This is this is what I'm talking about. We're Barry waste everyone's time. And I'm just like... What a show he's putting on for this judge because none of this has been litigated. No, but the judge has never weighed in on whether she should be able to have an attorney or not. He's just throwing a fit for David Miscavige's benefit. And it was so disgusting. God, this is when I wish I could, you know, this is when you wish you, you know, somebody that knows the case could just speak up and say to the judge, judge, look, this guy's putting on a show for you. Graham Barry's, of, you know, the the issue he rose was completely legitimate. Valerie Haney escaped from Scientology in the trunk of a car, and now this court is saying she has to go crawling back to them for their kangaroo court. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, it's infuriating. And to and the and the next thing that happens is the judge goes, Yeah, no, okay, we're not gonna do that. And then the sanctions thing happens. Well, let me ask you. Let yeah. me ask you about this. So the sanctions yeah. things I think is irrelevant. But the point, yeah. what what matters is, uh, Graham asked about doing that and some other things. And um, and I have to say, I think the judge does feel some sympathy for Valerie. Mm. But what did she keep saying? I think this is what you were reacting to, Chris. And I wanted mm. to ask you about today. Yeah, she just kept saying that it's in their hands now and there's nothing I can. in fact at one point she said you know um they haven't been receiving these letters from the ijc and and uh graham was just saying why doesn't the why don't we attorneys get copies of this stuff and the judge at that point said the idea of attorneys being noticed makes sense to me but it's up to the arbitral forum which is you know, the legal way of saying it's in Scientology's hands and there's nothing right. she can do. So, you know, I, I wanted to ask you about that because that just it's just incredible to see a judge say something like that where, once again, there's something right in front of her very eyes and there's nothing she can do about it that Scientology's not telling anybody about what she's going to go through. Why not, you know? Exactly. So uh, the thing that – the word that you used, and I wanted to ask you about this when, when I put that story out. Yeah was you said what an enabler she's being for Scientology. So I wanted to hear you. Yeah, your thoughts on that. absolutely. No, I was definitely going to go there. This is this is the sort of thing that as an ex-cult member for one and as somebody who has been watching this across the legal spectrum with other cults, you have to just like, wait a minute, what? You, you, you have the power to do something about this as a judge. You have the ability to deep, you know, go a little deeper and you're just letting, you're just letting it go. It just doesn't have anything to do with you. And that is enabling. That is, that is the exact point where you're giving the power to the cult, to Scientology. And this is, it, it, there could be a number of reasons you know my mind of course immediately jumps to conspiracies and she's bought off and all this kind of crap and then i go no 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 come on chris calm down 
you know, ignorance explains most of the nonsense that goes on in the world. And and this judge, and it seems and feels a little bit in talking with a number of lawyers and 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 papers I've read about this, that there is an almost eagerness to offload these cases to arbitration and the legal assumption that they are legit unless you can prove otherwise. But what annoys me, what, what just gets my goat every time is when actual evidence is being presented or claims are being made to the judge hey she had to escape this group in a car man in the back of a car like there's this is not there's trauma there's there's problems here this this is a problematic group you could say and the judge goes yeah yeah well sorry nothing i can do about it that's where i go no you're actually kind of working for scientology now you know and that's all too common in this kind of situation right now. And again, why we have a lack of understanding on the part of judges. It's, you know, it really shouldn't be that much to ask. The UK has figured this out. So we really need to figure this out over here that coercive control and the psychology of that kind of matters in issues like this. That's, yeah. you know, that's kind of my, my hot take on it. It's not, you know, whatever, but it's just, it's very frustrating. Uh, and of course, as an ex-Scientologist, it's even more frustrating to watch that happen. Well, I think, you know, experts will tell you that Congress set up a situation where um, to lessen the burden on courts, yeah. that there could be these arbitrations, but that I don't, I don't think many of them would argue that this was tipped to favor corporate America. That's and right. That these these corporations would much rather go to arbitration. Okay, have a retired judge, make it fair, make it even on both sides, but it's all done behind closed doors. And that's what these corporations care about is none of the evidence gets aired in public and it's just a number. Oh yeah, we settled. They got taken care of. And you never hear about what the horrible things were that this ex-employee went through. That's why corporate America likes it. Congress went along with it. Yeah. So you already have a situation where, okay, you signed a contract, you have to go to arbitration. Add to that the another layer, and that is the idea of religious arbitration, where it's a church running it, and it's not independent arbitration. It's, you know, uh, the per the church itself running it. Yeah. And then when you do that, because I've heard from so many people, well, California law says you have to have an attorney in, in arbitration. They don't understand this is not... This, the law doesn't reach into the Church of Scientology in this case. What, now that they've reached this point and there's an arbitrating panel in place and Valerie has signed this agreement, now Scientology is in charge of everything. They set all the rules. And if they don't want uh, Valerie to have an attorney in there, that's up to Scientology. Right. So I don't know that Congress exactly intended that. But that's, you know, Scientology has figured this out. It took, it took a while. You know, they had some rough litigation. They had some rough lawsuits they had to deal with. But, but, but about 10 years ago, they figured this out, that if you do any kind of a service in Scientology, any kind of a course, you will sign a, a waiver that includes a contract that includes an arbitration clause. That's right. And now, it, you know, we are seeing it is incredibly difficult now for any ex-Scientologist to sue the church for whatever abuse they went through. That's right. This was this kind of legal shenanigans on the order of importance-wise for the Church of Scientology and the power it gives them. This is on the order of magnitude of the corporate restructure of the 1980s that Denise Brennan did for them. It's that powerful in terms of the effect, the positive consequences for Scientology as a result of creating a labyrinth of corporations that nobody can really pierce this is the same order of magnitude of like they're going to be able to get away with just about anything they want and and the conceptually anybody can see the 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 inherent unfairness of this process to to take an abusive organization to take any organization abusive or not and put the ball entirely in their court as to what's going to happen in an arbitration dispute between that company and an unsatisfied customer, let's say. Yeah. And we and we already know studies show that these tend to go in the direction of the corporation's favor. And when you add on top of that, the NDA process, the non-disclosure agreement aspect of this, where nobody gets to talk about it at all, for 
reasons that clear that frankly boggle me. I, I why this is not a transparent process. And I and again, I, I think you're absolutely right. Maybe Congress didn't intend for this, but you know, unintended consequences are the you know, the bugbear of all of us with this kind of thing. And it sets up a system where you know, do you honestly believe other cult groups are not going to be watching and paying attention to this and doing the exact same thing? And the problem is that people in their awe, euphoria moments of, oh, my God, this is so wonderful. And these people would never do anything bad or wrong to me. I'll sign anything. And they never even bother to read it until it's too late. And if there's. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, the difference, the difference is that, uh, you know, if you were to go to a Protestant church or a you know, Jewish synagogue or a, a, or a mosque, you're not going to sign a contract to come in and pray. Exactly. And they're not going to start doing that. I mean, it's just so ridiculous, the whole notion. Oh, you want to come in and pray and sit through the sermon? Well, you have to sign this release first. They're never going to do that. That's but right. in Scientology, everything is a package, whether it's uh, auditing or a course. You know, it's a package. And, oh, well, you got to sign this thing first. And Scientologists just do it. So I don't I don't know that I think other you know how many uh you know destructive groups like this even have tax exempt status. So Scientology may be in a very unique place here. So one of just one other thing I want to add Chris and that is what what's what she's facing. Yeah. And we just want to remember what the Garcias went through because they they went through this themselves about 6 years ago. Um so the next step is that they went to this thing. They had the three arbitrators Luis has characterized it as a total joke. Um, he brought like 900 pages of evidence and the IJC disallowed 90% of it. Um, the panel did award them a token amount. Yep. They, But they didn't have a transcript or recording. They weren't allowed to have an attorney or anything. So they went back to the court and said, Judge, look, this was a joke. This doesn't you know, handle the fraud we went through. Please throw out the results of this arbitration and let's get back to the lawsuit. And that judge said, no, this is sufficient. This is fine. And he signed off on it. That's right. That's right. So, and, and that's it's just more really enabling. Own, <laughs> that's really a Valerie's only uh, sort of path now. She's got to go through this thing. Yeah. However ridiculous it is, come back to court and then say to the judge, okay, judge, this was stupid. Throw it out. Now, will this judge do that or is she more sympathetic? I don't know. But that's basically the path she has forward. Right. Uh, well, one hopes. I mean, the pattern of behavior so far has not been, you know, uh, open to me thinking she's going to, you know, suddenly realize what the hell's going on. But maybe anything can happen. And I honestly, truly hopeful, you know, I'm very hopeful that that will happen. I, and I got to comment, you know, Valerie Haney is showing an incredible amount of courage in doing what she is doing here. This is not not easy and don't make no mistake her life is a living hell right now that Scientology is making it that way with all their fair game practices they are absolutely not leaving her alone right now with this and lord knows what the hell is going on with that you know on that end because she can't talk about it so you know kudos to her for fighting this fight because we need as, as much as I eye roll and he's Nash and get upset about this stuff, the fact of the matter is the only way to change this system and to overcome these enablers and to overcome Scientology shenanigans is to fight these fights. And it, yeah. and it takes time and money and courage, like certainly more than, you know, a lot of folks have. And, it, and I really want to acknowledge her for that. All right. So that all being said, I think we've covered what we wanted to cover this week. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> okay. You bet, Chris. This is great. All right. So folks out there, um, like, share, spread the joy, you know, uh, spread the news about what we're doing here. And, uh, and we will see you guys next week. Oh, and by the way, if you have not, I will put in this plug, subscribe to Tony's blog. <laughs> it's the uh, the address is right there again on the screen link below I will I will make sure I get that in there and uh, and you can keep up with the news as uh, we do every day uh, with what's happening in the world of Scientology all right guys Thank see you, you next Chris. week you bet you bet all right bye bye guys <laughs>